of the DNVR Rapids podcast. I'm your host, Mitchell Carroll, joined by the fellas, Cowboy Super Yaya. I mean, it's it, baby. And Ooh. my guy downtown, Dwayne Brown. Hello. Welcome to soccer time. We are live from the Toyota Lounge here at DNVR. Driven by your Front Range Toyota Source, Toyota is the official vehicle of DNVR. We got a fun little show, guys. We're on a hot streak. I think this team's hot. Can we say the team's hot? I mean, they have Rafa. That's true. Can't get any uglier. I'll tell you that much. Wow. Those Wait, rapids are so hot right now. That's confusing. So hot right now. Um, we got a lot to talk about. We're going to go over, you know, Yaya wasn't a part of a winner's lounge. Which is a bummer because Yaya on a winner's lounge is about as peak vibes as it gets. Oh, I was also pretty drunk. That would have been even better. We know what drunk Yaya on a Winner's Lounge feels like. I didn't have sunglasses um, with me, so I wouldn't have worked out as good. Speaking of Winner's Lounge sunglasses and uh-huh. drunk Yaya. Okay. This Saturday. Come down. Yeah, hop in. Get uh, to the DMVR bar. Go to the DMVR.com. Events. We have our takeover this Saturday. Get on a bus. It's 420. Vibes. It's <laughs> C38 takeover. Vibes. It's a good Rapids team. Vibes. It's us. Vibes. vibes. Vibes on vibes. So many vibes. Just come hang out with us. It's going to be a great time. Um, let's see. What are we going to talk about today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, practice yesterday. Talked to Coach. Talked to Keegan. Um, just saw a bunch of stuff. We're going to talk about some general Pitt's disrespect, yeah, yeah. Everybody's disrespecting a Pitt, man. It's not cool. It's, it's all fun and games to you drown in a rapid, right? Yes. We're going to drown you in rapids. Like, you're, you're going to be drowning because you're, not, you're yeah. not careful. you got to be careful when you tread water, man. you got to be careful. You can't just throw stuff out there. Uh, people do it all the time. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to roast our guy, Matt Doyle. Uh, was it Doyle gonna, or Weeby? It was Doyle. It was Doyle. We, Weeby tried to give him an out. It's not just Doyle. Like, it's, it's so, everybody. It's but Weeby everybody. tried. We're going to get into it. We have a whole segment about it. Even one of the guys I like the most is always down on the rapids. Always. Which, um, fair enough. I'm not going to. Yeah, look, <laughs> you can't blame him, but come on. Come on. Watch the pits. Uh, we're going to talk about the new rules implementing this weekend. We're going to talk about the new rules possibly implementing this summer. And we're going to look ahead to the Dallas game because Dwayne hates Dallas. We hate Dallas. We're going to talk about how the rapids should win this game. But first. It's true. Yeah, yeah. We have to get your feelings on this game we just had. San Jose sucks. They stink. <laughs> that defense is bad, but that doesn't discredit what the Rapids did. How many times did we see them last year go up against horrible defenses, horrible teams, and not capitalize? They did their job. Rafa is finally showing out. Besides the penalty, which I am so happy that he earned it, he's the one that earned that penalty. A goal from under play is incredible, in my opinion. Just because it shows what he's capable of, how he can be a poacher and just be at the right place at the right time and take advantage. Plus the assist, man. That assist was easy. It wasn't anything incredible, not an incredible pass. But just making the right play. How many times have we seen the Rapids not make the right play at the right time? And Rafa just did the right thing. He saw Cole running. He's like, oh, here's the ball, Cole. Take it from me. Do your thing. That's what we want, right? None of them are selfish. And I love that after the cel- after they scored, they celebrated together. Rafa ran at him. They hugged each other. You saw in the thumbnail, if you look on YouTube, they're hugging each other. They're celebrating together. There's a real connection in this team now, and it's something that is, we, they can build towards a go, going up against a harder schedule, going up against more talented teams, and you've seen them really kind of just mold together. You see Jordy. Every time something good happens, even if he's not near the action, he'll run to coach. He'll run or yep. turn around and celebrate. That's how much they're playing for the badge right now. And that's something that you got to love in a team that struggled mightily last year, that couldn't get a goal, couldn't get out of its own way. And they're clicking. And that's what you want. 
what's better than talent is form. Because you're in good form, and then you have talented players, and they're clicking. It's a symphony. We're hearing a perfect orchestra, and that's exactly what uh, Saturday was. Take away the San Jose. I think that would. I think if you play like that against a team like Seattle, you win two one with the full squad. You know, like this team is so connected. You talked about those celebrations. How about Cabral being a celebration guy? He I was mean, synced up with Cole on the on the Happy Gilmore swing. He did. He hit the gritty with Rafa. I mean, he has to celebrate something. I don't think he's going to sure. celebrate it by himself anytime soon. Well, he season. has scored a <laughs> goal this year. He's scoring Cabral. It's a joke, guys. Cabral. I know. I'm just I know. It's a joke. He's a, is he the vibesman on this team? But I'm just saying, like, that's not new. Like, Cabral is a celebration, like, dude. I love it. Like, his last year, like, that was my favorite one of the entire year. The one against Galaxy. Against uh, uh, Galaxy. Like, that was amazing. Oh, pointing to yeah. his jersey. Yeah, just yeah. rubbing it in and celebrating with the guys. Like, it's it's fun to see Cabral integrated into the team. You know, like, I don't think he's here yet. You know, he's making, you know, improvements. But, I mean, that's a great point, Mitch. Like, you see how much he's integrated with the guys. Like, whereas last year you felt like he was just a dude on the roster, but you never really saw him. And just nobody was really connected that much last year. So. I also want to say part of that, it was roster building last year. It was a way older team compared to Cabral's age, mm-hmm. compared to Moise's age. For sure. Compared to a lot of those guys that were key, were supposed to be key parts of the team. This year, they're all around the same age. They're from 19 and Kamani Stewart Baines to 30, yeah. the oldest guy on the squad. Keegan, yeah. Like that age difference is not as huge. Ask me and Dwayne. I mean, there's a bigger age gap between me and Dwayne, <laughs> and me and him get along well. Why? Because it's somebody that we're learning. I use him as a mentor, and that helps out a lot, right? And instead of using they're using Keegan as a mentor, but he's young enough where he can connect with a guy like Moise and tell him, "Hey, dude, next time run back, I'll push up, and we can help it out." That kind of connection, that kind of age difference, uh, not being as huge as it was last year, it makes like, makes a big it's big awesome. impact. You know what's crazy? And, and Coach pointed this out to me yesterday. I talked to him for probably five minutes, ten minutes while they were doing stretches and stuff. He came over and, um, you know, there's like, if you look at like your ideal starting lineup right now, eight of the ten outfield players were here last year. Mm-hmm. Right? Last year was a disaster. Last year was vibeless. Last year was depressing if you went to practice. It was depressing <laughs> if you went to games. It was The whole thing was depressing. And now you have... Almost the same lineup, playing cohesive, playing together, working hard, working hard for each other, being selfless. It's amazing what he's been able to do in eight match days to bring what was a group that was failing on most levels to to put out the product they're putting out right now. Yeah, I mean, how I said, man, I think that leadership on this team is way better than last year, and that's no disrespect to guys like Rubio, to a guy like Yarby. I think they were great leaders. But I'm telling you, that age gap and how you communicate with people is very different. And, like, when you have somebody closer in age, Mm -hmm. it's easier to understand where they're coming from because they're just going through it. And the older and the more separated you get from rookies, from guys that are in their second, third year in the league, the more you look at it and be like, come on, dude, what are you doing? Instead of trying to help them work through that process. Right. And that's something that, again, Armas has done a great job of. He's a player's coach. Like, you've seen it constantly throughout. Like, everybody praises him. But not just that, you see when guys talk to the media that they give credit to young guys like Cole for helping them through the league. They give mm-hmm. guy they give credit to guys like Zach Steffen. And even Ollie has gotten a lot of praise for the leadership he's, he has out there on the pitch. And that all comes down to just being able to communicate with each other in a way that they all understand. And yeah. that's so important to a team. Chemistry is something that's very under uh, underestimated, I feel, a lot of times. But it's what makes soccer beautiful because when there's chemistry, how I said, it's a symphony. People can get along. People are going to know where they are. The passes come by themselves. You don't even got to look for goals. And I think it's the right – you mentioned, Yaya, people, different people showing up or being um, spoken about as far as their leadership with Ollie, with Cole, um, with Zach, um, Georgie, you know, all of the guys who have leadership they're bringing into the club – then you have guys like Ollie, who was the leader down in R2 last year. Um, and leadership can go really, really poorly. 
when you've got a bunch of leaders in the room, because typically like that leadership characteristic is I want to be the leader and in charge. And instead on this squad, it's you've got a bunch of guys who are uh, they have that right kind of leadership of they bring in leadership skills to work with each other one on one. But as a whole, no one is trying to like claw their way up the ladder. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like Keegan's the guy, but there's a lot of other guys, depending on where you are on the pitch, you know, Keegan can't be in right. every position. So you have, you know, little spots of leadership all over the pitch that are helping each other during the actual match, you know, and during training, which, you know, um, Mitch has seen when he's there as well. So it, it, the vibes, man, are just crazy different. Well, I, want, I mean, you, you make a good point about the leadership and, and Keegan specifically, um, you know, there's styles of leadership, right? Mm -hmm. And with a guy like Rubio, I think Rubio it will be more of a leader in a club like Austin where there's, you know, 30 plus year old vets and yelling at them to get your point across and being angry with them to get your point across is going to work. Right. Right. But when you have a bunch of young kids who we're playing poorly and getting bad results and you know, the media was telling them, you know, how bad they were playing and the fans were walking <laughs> out of the game and that's not going to work that, you know, that is, there's no connect there. And also he was hurt for most of the year, right? Price was hurt all year. So you're missing your two leaders who probably his leadership style doesn't mesh. Right. And now you have Keegan who's like, I mean, he's Mr. Rapid, obviously. He's a vibesman. Yeah, and he's low key. He knows when to defer. He knows when to put his foot down. He's been there. He's, you know, it's like he 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 knows what he's doing. And it's it's with Keegan, man. It's so helpful that he's a guy that was struggling at the beginning of the season, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody could see it. Everybody on the team was aware of that his struggles. Like it's it wasn't a secret. It wasn't like a secret bad game. But he kept working hard. He kept working those issues, and that's how you you lead a team that's young. And teach them, like, hey, even if you have a few bad games, you can work through it, keep pushing, and you'll be better the next time things come around. And that's and such that's, a Keegan thing. Exactly. Like, he leads by example, yep. and that's been perfect for this team, and that's what we want. And a guy with Chris Armis, he's the vocal guy. He's the guy that goes out there and screams at guys, and it's like, this is what we're doing, guys. Let's get it done. And this is what well, you're doing a great job. Now let's just improve on what we have. And that's what's working with this team, and I appreciate leaders like that. Um. Any other takes from the game? Anything else you want to you wanna touch on? From Yeah, from man. I hope there's a turning point for Sam Bynes. He was getting cooked in that first half Espinosa, against Christian. Man. But, uh, again, Woo. Espinosa was in the Golden Boot race last year. Great player. Um, if he's on the market, I'd hit him up because that team's going to be bad, I think, for a while. <laughs> um, that's somebody maybe you can do a little trade with, get some more wingers. I'm never against it, you know? Talent into this team is always fun. Um, but Espinosa was cooking him. That second half, Espinosa was quiet. And I don't know if it's because they locked down the uh, they locked down the midfield and they just couldn't get service to Espinosa anymore. But it looked like Sam fi figured something out, and I hope there's a turning point for him because if the Rabbits are going to be good, he's going to have to be good as well. He is going to have to be one of the engines that pushes that team through that left wing. Yeah, and look, he, uh, you know, I've kind of been waiting to call the Vines game. You know, mm -hmm. like I want to every week. Like, all right, this is this is the week we get the Vinesy goal <laughs> or the crazy cross for a sweet assist or something. You know, it's just like, when's it going to break out? Because I don't think he's been bad outside of that first game. And maybe, you know, pieces here and there. For the most part, the left side's been the one that's getting worked mm -hmm. in a lot of these games. Um, but yeah, that was a struggle in that first half. You know, and I'm glad you brought that up. I wish I, wish I talked to you about this before. I could have asked yeah. the Coach about what was up with that right side. Um, it, it's coming. We know it's coming. Yeah. We've seen Vines at his peak, right? Like, we know it's coming. And it's also part of that, you got to remember, Vines is a couple weeks behind some of these guys. He got late to Mexico. He got injured. He needs a little bit more games to get into rhythm. Um, you kind of saw all the guys mesh last week and the week before, kind of start against LAFC, kind of mm -hmm. start seeing them, what this team can become. Sam is a week or two behind, and you can kind of see it too because now he kind of grew into the game against San Jose. And hopefully it's a launching point where he just stays stable, becomes that centerpiece we expected to be on the left side. So I think Sam is going to bounce back, and he's a little bit on that, like, hey, he's a week or two behind. He missed a couple of weeks due to injury in the in the pregame, and he was also late to Mexico. So just give him a little bit more time, and he's going to get there. 
Uh, shout out to everybody in the Toyota chat. Uh, your chat stay delivered by the 2024 Forerunner. Uh, we got Crash the Car saying seeing Vines at full form will be exciting. I agree. Can't wait to unlock the Vines back roll once again. Um, Ian Hart, Stefan Clean Cheap, baby. Believe that. Mm-hmm. Stefan, man. Oh, if we can kind of use this as a transition point into practice. <laughs> um, they played the the five on five with an all time midfielder, mm-hmm. you know, two, two games at once. Um, Stefan. Oh, boy. He was tearing Moise a new one on a missed defensive assignment at the end. It was the last action of the whole practice, and he was so pissed. And it was awesome to see because, look, right now this team, especially guys like Moise who went through all of last year, right, like guys who've been around, this is as good as it's been. They've never felt better in their professional playing career. And here he is. Ending a practice and Stefan is just screaming at him. Hey, man, better to scream at him during training than in the game. You can't let <clears throat> your level of play down at all. Yeah. Like, you just can't. Like, just because you're in a, on a high right now, you got to keep that high. You can't just get comfortable, complacent. You got to keep going, keep pushing. That's what great players do. That's what Moise is, in my opinion. And Zach is trying to make Moise into an amazing player, a great player, an all time player in Rapids history. And that's how you do it. You just can't let level of play down, even if it's practice. He's been in trainings. I mean, he was in Pep Guardiola's training sessions. Exactly. Like, he knows what it takes to be the best because <laughs> he's been a part of it. Because he's lifted a Premier League trophy. He's a Pep guy. Like Pep brought him in. Yeah, like he, you know, like he knows what to do in practice. And this is another reason why I think it, that Chris Armis hire was so underrated. It was at freaking Carrington. He was training with, you know, he was. He was making sure Cristiano Ronaldo was on his game. You know he, what I mean? Like, also, these are like training expectations that didn't exist. And not that not that Robin Fraser runs, you know, poor trainings or it's just such a different style. Like you can tell that they're not going to miss any little detail because mm-hmm. this is your time to train. Why would we cut it short? Why would we go shorter? Why not do this extra drill? Why not hammer home this extra uh, you know, we're going to hammer a mid block today. We're going to hammer a low block today. And then we're going to do footwork drills. And then we're going to do five on five. And then we're going to do set pieces. Right. And like, there's no just like, okay, we got a guy's head on in. You know, like it's, it's regimented. It's specific. It's hard. And like they needed it. Clearly these young guys needed it. Because mm-hmm. last year wasn't working for them. <laughs> yeah, of course. And so it is you like, you know, kind of how we just to kind of wrap up what everyone was saying between new leadership, new training style and and, tr- and making that specific for the players you have, right? Like there's leadership styles, but there's also ways to be led, right? Yeah. Like how you respond to that leadership and that structure. And clearly the mix right now is just, they found the recipe. Yeah. Right. Um, we'll see how it goes. It's eight games, right? That's quarter of the season. So good quarter of the season. Still need a good three quarters of the season. And I will say yep. that I am impressed with Chris Armas for changing his coaching style and his tactics. Mm-hmm. Um, you think it's Red Bull. We like to look at him and it's like, oh, it's Red Bull high energy. If anything, it's more of a deserving Brighton situation. They're inviting pressure in a counterattack. They defend on, on a nice low block of 4-4-2. And then they just find the right path, break the defense, and they are off to the races. It happened against Miami too. I mean, Diag comes in. Disruptor, they find the perfect spot, they turn around, go, go, go. You got two players already running, the ball's already on its way. That's not Red Bull because Red Bull recovers the ball within the half spaces of within the big box and about a, their final third. This is more deserving. They're gonna invite the pressure. They they trust their defense, they trust their midfield, they're gonna disrupt as they get the ball, one right pass, and they're off to the races. That's all they care about. The first right pass, then they're gone. Future United manager to Zerbi, you mean? Uh, Barcelona's knocking uh, on that door too, baby. I hope so. Um, <laughs> tough day for your boys yesterday. Yeah, that was tough. not a red. That should have been a yellow. He denied a goal scoring opportunity. That's yeah, a that's, but it's yellow. Eh. That's a yellow because it's not a hard foul. I mean, you pull the guy one on one with the goalie down to the ground. Whether it's hard or soft, that's a red. That's oh, no, a I, lot, still, baby. I still think it's a yellow, but. It was soft. I am yeah. also, I'm, I'm, I'm also a Barca fan, yeah. so it's very. Um, very biased of me. <laughs> Another point about Chris Armas, real quick, before we go to break. And you, you just made me think of it right now. Trust. Mm. He has not only shown 
that he's going to push you and he's going to coach you hard and he's going to expect good play out of you. He's going to trust you. They didn't make a sub until the 85th minute in that game. And that's, that's something I actually didn't enjoy very much, but I can see the thought process behind it. I he, wish subs came in just a little bit sure. earlier. And he did say that they were standing there for probably two, three minutes. So mm-hmm. it's you know, closer to an 80th minute sub. But that's like, hey, you guys are doing this right. right? And he's not just showing the guys on the field that they're doing it right. He's showing the subs waiting to potentially get an appearance. Yeah. This is what I want to see. This is right. Like mm-hmm. These guys are crushing it. Why mm-hmm. would I disrupt this? Yep. Can you do this? I don't know, but I know they're doing it. So watch yep. and see what it is. Is that something? Yeah. Okay, cool. It is definitely something. <laughs> I mean, how many, how many seasons have we sat here, either in post game or here in, you know, in the studio and been yelling about bad subs, you know, yeah. and it's just like, why why can't he get that right on subs? Right. And I would have done this and I would have done that. And it's, that's not a conversation we've had this year, right? Uh, which is awesome. So yeah. yes, you are completely yeah. correct. Oh, and shout out Wayne. <laughs> yeah. What? Shout Wayne, out Wayne, dude. debut, he, Travis first game this year. Yeah. Him and uh, those guys didn't get a lot of time to actually make an impact. Um, one thing I appreciated was their commitment to the clean sheet. Mm-hmm. Uh, they threw their bodies at everything that came in. And they were positioned the right way. And that's something that speaks highly of Armis. That even up 3-0, guys are fighting for the small records because it means something to the guy in net. Yes. It means something to the leader they have back there. And that's something you got to appreciate from Armis for instilling that in them. Yeah, and Keegan, you know, just to tie a bow on practice, Keegan was, was so complimentary of not just Zach, but how proud he was of the back line to fight for that clean sheet like you said exactly mm-hmm. um and that's just you know that's the captain doing your job right there you know <laughs> praising everybody making sure the back line gets their shout um praised maxu well i tried to get him to praise maxu because i thought it was maxu's best game as a rapid but um <laughs> you know you know keegan he's like everybody did their job everyone worked hard so um all right we're gonna jump into some new rule changes here in a second but first guys we gotta talk about toyota toyota we're toyota guys that's what we are Toyota has made themselves part of the fellas. It's true. They're right there. Look, they're I'm all getting over. that tatted on me somewhere. Sometime. Wow. <laughs> cool. Maybe the forehead in Toyota can pay me a little extra. Wow. We'll see. I'll do that with you. <laughs> um, maybe not. Maybe not forehead. Somewhere. <laughs> Ooh, maybe do the Toyota with the little with the little Yoda ears. I love when on your forehead. Do that. I'm not on the forehead. Um, <laughs> I do have a lot of headspace, though. I could do that. We'll figure something out. Uh, look, Toyota. Your front range Toyota stores are excited to begin our new partnership with DNVR. Toyota's the official vehicle here at DNVR. I'm a Toyota guy. Yeah, I was a Toyota guy. Dwayne, have you ever had a Toyota? I've not had oh, a Toyota. Well, too well bad that's not true. <laughs> Catherine has had a Toyota. Sure. Yeah. So you guys are one. We've, according to yeah, we yeah we've had a Toyota. Yeah. It just wasn't mine, so I didn't right, get right, to right, drive right. it very much. <laughs> Look, we love our Toyotas. Uh, Trucks have always been a part of Toyota's DNA. For generations, Toyota has built durable legends destined for greatness and perfect for Colorado. Whether you're conquering off-road trails or hauling the way to the world, there's a Toyota truck that's just right for you. Like the all-new 2024 Tacoma and the return of the iconic 2024 Land Cruiser coming this spring. Man, I'd love a 2024 Land Cruiser. That would be so sweet. Uh... I'm a truck guy, man. I lift sure. that thing up, and I need to compensate for something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my cousin's part of a Land Cruiser uh, like mod group yeah. that goes up into the Sierras in California and just rock like, crawling, oh, rock crawling it. like twenty Land Cruisers yeah. in a row, and I'm so jealous. I think it would be so fun. Um, Toyota offers 17 models with available all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, like the Epic Four Runner. A lot of forerunners around if you've seen them. I love forerunners. They're so very much. cool. Toyota also currently offers more low and zero emission vehicles combined than any other automaker to give customers numerous choices to reduce their carbon footprint. There are 16 different hybrid vehicles to choose from, like the Tundra iForce Max Hybrid Truck. You can have a giant Tundra and still be good for the environment. That's sweet. I love that. Toyota SUVs take command of the road and on the trail so you can explore the road less traveled without sacrificing smooth city rides and SUVs like RAV4, and the Grand Highlander. Visit your Front Range Toyota stores at a location near you. AutoNation Toyota, Arapaho and Centennial. Corwin Toyota in Boulder. Groove Toyota in Littleton. 
Mountain States Toyota in Denver. That's where we got our last Toyota. Stevenson Toyota East in Aurora and Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. Toyota is a proud partner of the Colorado Rapids and the official vehicle mm. of DNVR. Uh, we're also... Oh, no. We're going to save that for the second ad break. Okay. Um, we're back. Welcome back to DNVR Rapids. Yaya, Dwayne, Mitch. Hanging out with Super Producer Alyssa on the ones and twos. Uh, we got some rule changes coming. Do you mm. want to talk about the potential rule changes or the for sure rule changes first? Mm, I think potential, and then we can jump into the other sure. one because then that'll lead into the weekend's game. Perfect. Yeah, so... Uh, Potential rule changes coming this summer. Yeah, yeah. You wanna you wanna drop some knowledge on the people. Yeah, man. Um, so the MLS is finally making some roster changes once again, uh, thanks to Miami and Inter Miami uh, and Messi. Um, there's gonna be this new rule where it used to be that you have you had three DPs, you can only use two U22s. If you had two uh, DPs, you can only use three U22. You could well, you could use all three U22s. So it had to be either or. Now that MLS is doing it, that you could use three DPs and three U22s, or you can use two DPs and four U22s with two million in GAM if you use the four U22s. Huge news. That means better players are coming to the league because you're getting younger guys. You forget that there's a lot of young guys on in this uh, league that are under that, and it's going to be great for the league if we have those U22s come in. Um, also, they're talking about adding... Uh, when you sell a player, you can convert three million of that into gam. It used to be like one point two or something like that. Which is, you look like the Kid Cow situation. Exactly, they sold him for like what ten million or something like that. Right, twelve. I don't remember the number, but you could only convert one point four million of that into gam, which you could use within the league, buy down DPs, funny money, and all that kind of stuff. Three million makes a huge difference in a sell like that. Yeah, it's gonna help. Keep MLS stars in the MLS. Exactly. Now you can get them better contracts. You have more money to buy them down if it's not working. The other one that, to me, it's going to affect the Rapids the most is now you have two max buyouts per season. Mm -hmm. So let's say a player isn't performing. If you have the money, you can just buy that contract out and go get somebody else. Guys like Kevin Cabral could be in that conversation. I don't know if DPs are out of this conversation yet. It's not official. But being able to like buy out guys that just aren't working out with for you two times a year, it's going to be a huge game changer around the league. And I think for the Rapids as well. I agree. I think it's a big deal. Um, and it's a big deal for clubs like the Rapids, right? Who are on a budget compared to some of the bigger spenders, um, you know, and, and, you know, obviously Kevin Cabral is like such an example of this because is he living up to like, if he was a DP on LAFC or Philly, <laughs> or Miami. He's not living up to that, right? No. But when you have a contract that doesn't go towards your cap and has someone spending half the money on it that's not you, all of a sudden you're like, okay, I kind of see the roster mechanisms at work here, right? Like mm -hmm. GMs that have to be creative in, in what contracts they give out and what money they spend can use these slots and now they can use all of them instead of just part of them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it really, I do think it's going to be good. Now, do I wish we just spent money like those big ones? Obviously, <laughs> right? Like, that's that's not really the I point. I don't think we Kronky just can the afford it, man. Is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Broke ass. <laughs> just he, ain't good. <laughs> he ain't got that bank like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Kronky. You can give me money if you want. Um, to, to your point, though, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's good for a club like the Rapids because because of we don't get the money like a lot of those other clubs we do have to take some some swings sometimes mm -hmm. and sometimes those Absolutely. are misses and you know last year and a lot of people would say this year too would use kevin cabral as a you know as an example of a swing and a miss mm -hmm. um so for clubs that are on a tighter budget that do have to take those swings this is a huge help yes you know because we can get out of those you know those uh, kind of trap like contracts well not just that it gives you one more swing yeah that you might not have had exactly and i mean it all it's also very helpful um, which is great by you the way three swings three swings because you can yeah. do two buyouts hey oh yeah. before I mean, you're out also i just want to give credit <laughs> to uh paul uh tenorino uh tenerillo who reported this first from the athletic great job go read his stuff yeah um like he paul. deserves a lot of yep. that um credit because he does a lot of the dirty work so we can talk about it mm -hmm. um but yeah man and i think the other one that to me is 
super helpful is that 3P, 3U, 22s. Mm -hmm. The league is about mm -hmm. to get so much better. If every team can add one better player or two to their team, that's just going to make the league higher competition. It can only be good for the Rapids because that means the Rapids are not an arms race if they want to keep being good. It can't just be like, we did our job, let them run out their contracts and it's done. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that the league needs to start going towards. I also think they should increase the um, the salary, mm -hmm. the salary cap being at four or five million is not good. It should be closer to 30, 20 to 30. Um, that's how good teams are built around. You don't need to spend 100, 200 million. I no. think 20, 30 lets you compete with the league I make a little bit more. Yeah, of course. And if you don't want to spend that, that's fine. That's what the salary cap. It's not a salary minimum, right? Right, right. And right, that's right. why it's like, if you want to spend uh, less than that, cool. But I think if you increase that, again, it just gives higher end players a chance to come to MLS. Yeah, and I think, you know, long term, what people don't really realize is you're adding more top level talent, right? Which means the the effect of you're going to have more competition for those spots but there's only so many right so now that means your tan players are better mm -hmm. right which means your roster players are better exactly right and everyone it just lifts the level of every roster slot by creating more top end talent it's like yeah messi's here in miami no one's going to match a messi right but we just saw lafc add a Giroux. exactly come on you're telling me you can't you know what i mean it? like yeah. that just means that like okay so who's who's nycfc going to add Right. Who's Portland going to add? And then all of a sudden it's like, OK, well, now the Raptors just signed a guy that we've seen play in the Premier League or in the Bundesliga or, you know, or La Liga or something yeah. like that. Like that's just how it's going. It's going to trickle down in ways that we're not. I don't think we can really plan on, but we know is going to at least raise the level. Yeah. And I mean, what is it like raising tide? Raises, raises all boats. Well, raises all boats. Mm -hmm. Like that's what it is. Like if one, if you increase the level of like once LAFC and all these expansion teams came into the league, you saw the level of play come up because they were serious. They were spending money, and look at the Rapids now. They got players like Zach Steph and Mihailovic. Like you have higher end players because of um, other teams making moves, and you have to keep up with them somehow or another. Or you're going to be a laughing stock. And whether right. you like it or not, these billionaires. This, this is all about ego to them. They don't want to be a laughing stock. They don't want to be made fun in the public. They don't, a lot of them don't care if you win a championship. They just don't want to be the worst. Right. And if you're, and if to not be the worst, you got to invest a little bit of money. And that means better players coming into the league. And that's just, again, that's just good for the league. And even if the Rapids are not in arms race or not at the top of the league, they're going to have to improve. And we're going to see eventually a, a high end player come into the Rapids. What if we see, uh, for Ferran, uh, Ferran Torres, like, come in, like, he's getting older. Then Bele could come to, like, the MLS when Ooh, he's getting older. He had like, a game yesterday, Exactly. Too. Like, you start seeing that kind of stuff just push its way up. And, like, maybe Alfonso Davies, like, when he's older, he's like, I want to go back to my to Canada. he go to Montreal, and he'll actually make a, a contract that's up to par with what he is as a player. That's the kind of things that you, they're looking into the future, and it's going to help a lot more. Just race all boats to, mm -hmm. all together. Love it. Let's go from big picture roster construction to on the field affects the competition rules. Mm -hmm. Dwayne, I'm going to let you tell us what those <laughs> are because you have them pulled up on your computer. Right I do. There. Um, <laughs> and I, also, I have them pulled up, but I also love them. Uh, I'm a big fan. I hate time wasting. I know it's part of the game. Real I just, quick. I hate it. Real quick. Yes. I was upstairs doing some, some events work yesterday. The Buffs boys come and sit down with us. I just gave them like a 10 second elevator pitch on the new on field rules. And they both were like, that's amazing. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it's, um, it's great. So first one is the off field treatment rule. OK, so just to break this down really quickly. Now, if a player goes down, is on the pitch for um, more than 15 seconds, the referee will stop play. And uh, that will give the medical crew time to uh, evaluate the player. If the player, uh, you know, can be moved, they will move them off the pitch and then they'll stay off the pitch for a minimum of two minutes. So if you are faking for more than 15 seconds, you get a two minute penalty. So that's your you're going to the penalty box for two minutes and you're a man down at that point. Yeah, there there's a couple of, you know, um, exceptions. You know, if there's a head injury uh, or a serious injury, something like that. 
um, you know, obviously, or fouls, you know, resulting in yellow reds, um, those sort of things. But uh, the important part is, long story short, is if you're down for more than 15 seconds, the play is stopped and then you're moved off for two minutes. So if you're flailing around, better be worth uh, your team playing a man down for two minutes. <laughs> Rudo, our guy Rudo from Hockey uh, Rules, baby. From DMVR <laughs> Avalanche going into the postseason. Check, make sure to check them out. He's hopping in the Toyota chat. Thanks for joining us, Rudo. I agree with Rudo too. Two minutes <laughs> for flailing around like a little baby. Um, so yeah, so that's the first one, and the other one is substitution rule. Um, you get ten seconds now for a sub. So walk get off the pitch, uh, you mm -hmm. know, and if you don't, then the person who's coming in pays the penalty of a 60 minute having to stay off the pitch until they can go in. So one minute for time wasting. Um, so those are the two time ones. That's I great. love it. Yeah. I, I love it doing that so last much. comment from Dustin. <laughs> Rubio would have played 20 minutes in a game with the real Oh completely man, that's true. hilarious. Yo, he was the ultimate gamer. Look, okay, obviously we hate time wasting in the when it doesn't big benefit picture. you. I don't even like it when I our team does it. I hate it. It is such a beautiful art form. Ugh. And when you see people push it in new ways and try new things to waste 30 seconds here, a minute there, I think it's beautiful in a, in a uh, way. It's, it's obviously not good for the game, but there's an art to it. Uh, there's a fart to it. Yeah, nice. Good it's good. Right, good it's, right, it's a little bit. Of, it's a little bit of a chess game when it comes to time watching. Yeah, like, look. like you got to pick and choose your spots. You just can't flail on the ground at every moment. Um, but it also does, as a viewer, it does bog down the game. It's mm -hmm. not as fun. Totally. So having to go quicker, it's gonna be great for everybody at the end of the day. More action, the better it is for everybody. Do you know who really loves these rule changes specifically? Americans. Chris Armis. This yep. guy right here. No, Chris Armis. So and we Chris him, Armis. We're we like talked to him yesterday. The same guy. We talked to him in practice yesterday. <laughs> He's like, look, we're a team that wants the ball in play because we're going to pressure that ball. Right? Like, we want the game moving and moving quickly because we are going to be moving faster and quicker and more intensely than the other team. We're not going to let them mm -hmm. off the gas. And the way, really, late in these games, the only way we've seen teams able to catch a moment from this rapid press is to waste time. Yep. Because they're unrelenting at the end of these games. So I think this is only going to be even better for the Rapids. Especially playing here Correct. at Elevation. My guy. Uh, <laughs> oh, you mean <laughs> altitude? <laughs> uh, so that's another advantage for us. Uh, uh, one last rule, yep, last rule. on um, that we'll be seeing starting this weekend is uh, VAR announcements, and that's simply that VAR decisions will be explained and announced by the referee to fans in the stadium and also on the broadcast to people who are watching um, uh, at home. So we will supposedly get some creative explanations on, I'm, on why the VAR decision stands or does not. I'm, I'm all for that. This is entertain me. Entertain me. <laughs> entertain me. Let the referees be part of the game. Don't let them oh, dominate see, the no, game. No, no. Oh, no don't let that. them dominate the game. But having them give an explanation is a way of just telling them what well, they're I, thinking. Yeah, I like, like the explanation. I'm just yeah. wondering how much BS is going to be involved I'm in cool it. with BS. Like, it's entertainment. Like, if we were not entertained, if we did not have refs to talk about, we would also not have a lot of things to talk about sometimes. <laughs> it's part of the game. I love it. Sportsmanship, uh, time wasting is too. But the, the more you have the ball in play, the better it is for you to be entertained. So, like, to me, it's give me NFL rules, man. Keep me entertained. Keep me on my toes. Sure. Why is that ref such a dumbass? Oh, that's why. <laughs> like, oh, now I see that you're, that you're just not dumb. Like, you just don't know what you're looking at. Like, I love it. Give me all that. That's what makes the game fun. Did you guys see the meme? So, you know the new meme that everyone's using AI on to slap a skin over the guy coming out to yeah. the yeah. crowd? Did you see the one with Ted Uncle yesterday? No. There's one There's one hey, with Ted, Ted Uncle, Uncle coming out doing the dance, and it's, you know, Ted Uncle coming out to explain why he just ruined your team's <laughs> chance of winning. <laughs> it was good. Half uh, the time, I, I, I fucking hate him. <laughs> uh, look, it's... I think you need those VAR explanations. 
right? And not just a gesture one way or a cancel it out the other. Yeah, I agree 100%. Like, like I'm trying to think of a VAR moment this year that would have needed an explanation, but I probably should have thought of this before I'm sitting right here. I don't right think there's been a lot of VAR time with the Rapids Mm-mm. that I can remember. Yeah. Either way, it's good. Be like, hey, like, like you think of uh, the only one I can think of right now is that penalty uh, at the end of Manchester United Liverpool mm-hmm. where Juan Basaka didn't touch the guy. One on one. He you didn't know, touch him. He went to the ground and didn't touch him, and he fell. One so on one, you bring him hear, down on an open, clear chance. He didn't touch him. There was no contact. So I would love to hear a ref explain how there was a penalty on no contact. I'm still mad. Um, okay. It's also, uh, real quick, just so we can clear, the roster rule changes might come this summer. Yes. They've been approved. They just have to be voted on. Second of all, these rules for the game were approved at the beginning of the year, but because of the things with the refs and everything that was going on, they weren't able to implement them until a couple weeks until the new contract. That's the reason why. The So just so you know, where the, when these contra- when these rules were changed and when they might be changed. I just want to make it clear for everybody listening. Yep. Yep. Nailed it. Look, I think these are all <laughs> going to be good for the Rapids. Yeah, for sure. I really do. Not everything <laughs> is... Bad for the Rapids. You know, a lot of times rules are like, okay, well, the Rapids aren't going to take advantage of that. But these ones I actually think fit this team and club. So that's kind of interesting to me. I don't know. Um, All right. We're going to talk about the haters. But first, we're going to talk about our friends at Fubo. We love Fubo because we love watching Colorado sports. Simple ass. Mm -hmm. Guy has a Nuggets hat on right now yeah we got to catch the altitude guys talking talking nugs we got to smack them lakers and you got to watch it somehow Gosh, you get to watch the nuggets destroy the lakers again that's you, worth signing up for fubo today literally right i can't think of a better reason <laughs> to pay money to that watch the number one internet reason. television than to watch the Lakers lose to the Nuggets. And then after that, hit up Liga Mekis. Yeah. We watch Champions League. Come watch Tijuana Liga. lose every game this year. <laughs> <laughs> you can also watch why Mexican teams are dominating MLS at times. Yes. Columbus? Hmm? Champion, hmm? Uh, CONCACAF Champions League. You can hmm? watch Europe, European Champion League. Like You have a lot of options. Tons of stuff. In fact, there's over 140 plus live channels of sports, shows, movies, and news. I love all four of those things. I love sports, shows, movies, and news. I'm okay. I can sounds like Fubo's perfect for me. The news, eh. I mean, news. The is rest fourth, of it, the rest of it, sure. Great. It's not first. It's probably in that order. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't watch the new Fallout show on Fubo, but it is awesome. Speaking of shows, uh, you can stream live TV from any device. I'm just a phone and, and TV guy. Mm. I guess sometimes my laptop, if I have to. Mm. What other devices? Maybe your fridge, if you have like a smart fridge. iPads, tablets. iPads, yeah. Your watch. The uh, cool smart watch. It's too small for me. <laughs> Got old man like eyes. This. I'm going to get rolled in and all they confused well, I have to that. watch everything far away. Watch you poop <laughs> <laughs> uh, You can watch the most Colorado sports for the lowest price. And you can watch literally right now. Just go sign up for a free trial. It's right there. QR code on the screen right there. Um no contract, no cable, no hassle. Just sign up and start watching. Over a thousand hours of cloud DVR, so you can watch back games like Yaya does, three, four, five times. And you can watch your local teams while you're out of market. And that's probably the most important thing right there, right? Um, we already said all the events coming up, but the draft is right around the corner for the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, you just had the Masters, but you know it's golf season all summer. You got some majors coming up. Um, Definitely worth signing up for. Watch all your favorite sports, including the Rockies with Fubo. Because the Rockies are on Fubo. They're so hard to find on the TV. Yep. I can't find them on the TV. Well, I can because we have Fubo. And that makes it easy. Uh, so make sure you catch up on the Young Rocks. They can have some fun games. They're not gonna, it's not going to be every game. No, no. <laughs> They're great games to put in the afternoon when you're doing something. Absolutely, it's like golf. Yep. Resting TV, <laughs> and you can do that with Fubo. Go to www.fubotv.com. 
slash DNVR. And you get 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. That's pretty good right there. So make sure you hit that uh, and support our friends at Fubo and support us here at DNVR. <clears throat> All right, guys, we are back live in the Toyota Lounge. It's Yaya. It's Dwayne. It's Mitch. It's Super Producer Alyssa. Whole crew's here. You know what the whole crew likes to do? Talk about the haters. One hater in particular that drew the ire, the wrath of, of online Rapids Twitter. <laughs> of the Rapids. The <laughs> Rapids. <laughs> the Rapids. Like it's so offensive that the Rapids exist and can play <clears throat> good ball. How did you feel about that? You were kind of, I mean, obviously you were doing stuff. So like I, saw I was so deep in Twitter between running our socials and mine and, and you know, I was all I was way too into it. You were doing stuff. So maybe you had a, a slightly higher view of it or something. So this might be a weird take for me, but I just didn't care enough. Um, wow. The thing is, national perspective is always going to be different from people that follow the team closely mm -hmm. those guys do such a hard job of trying to follow every team they're running based off literally what happened last year they're not looking at the rapids closely unless they play miami or seattle um well then they saw good results they saw good results but that doesn't take away the pain the what they saw last year mm -hmm. they could be aware of the changes that whatever's going on the perspective of the rapids has been and will forever be until they win constantly a team that's on the ground a team that's not mm -hmm. good a team that's bottom feeder it's part of it. A guy like Matt Doyle is like Nick Wright. Okay. Oof, they, that's mean. It might be mean, but it's true. These guys are here to get reactions. They know the game. I'm not saying they don't. But they're just looking at them in microcosms instead of big picture. They don't realize what's going on with the team. Guys like Tom Bogart, who talk to the teams constantly and have to look at every team so they know what's going on in roster building, are a little bit more in depth and a little bit better at that. Remember, it's okay to get offended. I'm all for getting offended. It's fun. Dude, Let's, being petty is like it's my great. favorite thing to do. It's great. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's it's a great time all the way. Like, but it's also like the Rapids have proven to be a bad team. Of course, they're getting way better, and I'm excited for the. I, I'm just excited for the Rapids to prove them wrong. Now it just adds another layer to this improvement of the rapids and where they can be yeah i guess it's just so frustrating because they have such glaringly obvious good results like you're telling me that the total soccer show or the extra time guys didn't see lafc lose to the rapids no i guess didn't see them get they now have two four-point road trips this year two four-point road trips which was it didn't happen for the last two years. Nope. Right? Like, now, you know, three of those points and one of them was San Jose. Whatever. Um, but I think what it, it just really chaps my ass because you have... Uh, Be careful with that ass, man. The end of extra time <laughs> yesterday. They finally <laughs> talked about it. Right? And Doyle's like, look, I know it was a big win, but, like, relax. And it's like, that's not what people were offended by. Mm-hmm. When you said losing to the Rapids was the worst thing in the world. In all caps. Yeah. In all caps. It had nothing to do with the San Jose game. If you have watched the Rapids this year, the San Jose game went exactly like everyone thought it would. If you have watched this team, they are way, they're light years ahead of San Jose this year. The thing is, it was a loss by San Jose, and it, the, it should have been about San Jose losing, but he made it about the Rapids. And in my opinion... When you don't show up and do the work, you take the lazy way out, which is to try to bring somebody else down to your level, saying that <clears throat> basically I did as mount I did about as a, a much work on the rapids as the rapids did on themselves last year. If right. they're basing it on last year, like it's just I didn't do any work. I'm not paying attention. So I'm going to make it into a joke about the Rapids versus actually doing some journalism and looking into the Rapids and what they're doing or just making it about San Jose. So I get it. Like the Rapids are a perennial punching bag um, because of who they are. Um, but also your job 
is to know about these things. Yes. And you didn't do your job, so you made a joke about it, and it came back on you, you know? So, and it's the same thing. Like, Dustin had said, Pids were taking shots or strays on Total Soccer Show today. They were talking about getting better players to MLS, and Gas said, going to Colorado and playing in front of 1,000 people, you know? It's like 14, thank you. Yeah, first of all, like <laughs> you got stadiums like Atlanta that can seat, yeah. you know, 50,000. Uh, but again, it's just when you don't take enough time to do your job and you try to make it this little funny, funny, ha ha joke about the Rapids, to me, it's crappy. It's, it's just, it's not good reporting. But so that, but it I, don't, I don't have any respect for it. But it comes down to like. You don't respect the Rapids, I don't respect you. But Bang. It, but it does Eat come it, down. Doyle. It, it does come down to like, <laughs> who's, but who's really losing here? The Rapids are winning. Yes. San Jose is losing. Exactly. That was the story, no, but no, they made it about no, the Rapids. No, no, but what I'm saying, like, what's, what's really happening here? The Rapids are winning. Who, who's losing? The people that are making fun of the Rapids. Because yeah. yes. they're looking dumb. Because you're going to look like yeah, an idiot. You're not. Like, <laughs> that's that's right. what I'm saying, like. Let the national perspective be what it wants. If the Rapids ho uh, lift that MLS Cup, yo, that's egg on your face. If the Rapids beat your LAFC in the playoffs, your Inter Miami in, in the finals, that's egg on your mm -hmm. face. They're talking out of their ass, and they're the ones that are going to look bad because the team is doing a good job. Look, you're a national MLS guy, and you look at those standings. Rapids are three points out at first with a game yeah. in hand. Like, mm -hmm. what? How are you dismissing this team this year when they've beaten or gotten results against the best teams in the league? But that's it's just not a sexy thing to do. They're going to focus on LA. Of course. They're going to focus on Miami. And again, that's I'm fine. not trying I'm that's not trying fine. I'm not trying to defend these I don't guys. think that's the problem. I think it's fine that you do that. Messi should get more time on air than the Rapids should. LAFC should get more time on air than the Rapids should. But you shouldn't refer to the Rapids as this laughing stock and like losing to them is embarrassing cuz they're good. And again, I understand that, but that's why shows like us exist. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, Holding the High Line Shout exists. Out. That's why uh, Box Footy exists. That's why the C38 podcast exists. Mm -hmm. Because we know what's going on. And if you're depending on their opinion, I'm sorry for you. You're not going to get any insight right. on the yeah. Rapids because yep. they just don't care. Mm -hmm. And if you're mad about this, let them hear it. Be petty. You <laughs> fuck them. Like, it's that, it's that straightforward. But at the end of the day, they're going to be the ones looking bad, not us, because the Rapids are fucking killing I'm gonna it. I'm going to put it out that. here. <clears throat> In the event, let's say things really go our way, Rapids get it together, the Rapids win MLS Cup. I am going to put out a GoFundMe or something. Whatever. We will, we will gather some funds as a fan. We will make a second trophy. That will be a giant middle finger. <laughs> and we will parade it around every time someone tweets something about the Rapids. The Rapids. We'll put their picture you know, with that trophy. And remember, to piggyback on Yaya's point really yeah. quick, you know who's super petty about that from what I've heard? Georgie. Yeah. He's I love like, it. Like someone like jumped the line at Media Day in Miami. And he's like, okay, cool. If you need an interview later, I know that this happened. Yeah. Come on. I am i didn't know that. <laughs> and, and Georgie has just moved up into my top. Like, dude, top this rapids. team sees all this. Exactly. And, like, again, at the end of the day, who's going to miss out on all this fun shit? Not us. We're giving this team props. It's going to be the national guys that just didn't care about little Colorado. Look what happened last year in the NBA Finals. Look what happened when the Avalanche won the championship. Everything was stacked against them. Nobody talked about them, and they threw some egg on their face. It can happen again. That's yep. the whole thing. It's still Just happening. Fire, to something the exactly. Yeah. Something to prove. And again, I, when I say these guys are like Nick Wright, I mean it. Yep. They're here for reactions. True. They're not here for analysis. True. They're not here to tell you how good a team is. They're not here to tell you what they think of a team. They're True. here to get a reaction out of you because that's how they keep their job. That's a good point. The more you react, the more they get their job. The, le the less things are going to yeah, change. Yeah, I actually listened to Extra Time. I never listened to Extra Time. Exactly. I actually gave them a listen. Exactly. Ah! And that's what it is at the end of the day. <laughs> and, this, and again, I want everybody to be mad. I'm cool with being mad. I love being mad. mad I'm number mad, one angry mad, guy mad, everywhere mad, I go, mad, right? Mad. Like, number one, baby. I, I hold that shit with prestige. But 
It's also you got to realize when they're getting you mad for their benefit, Correct. they're not getting Correct. you mad because they did something wrong. Correct. They're doing it. They know what they're doing. And that's why they're going to be less credible at the end of the day than Good us. Point. Okay. We got about four and a half minutes to talk Dallas. So, Dwayne, you hate <clears throat> Dallas more than anything. What are you looking for in this game? Go. Uh, I'm looking for Dallas to lose because I hate them. Um, <laughs> I do think Dallas Fair. is much better on paper than they are in the standings right now. That's due to injury. Um, so it depends on who's playing. Um, his name is escaping me right now. He's Spanish. Ferreira? No, not. Uh, Peck? No. Peck is Spanish. He's uh, Bias? He's just, he came back onto the field last week. Sebastian Leggett, Alan Velasco. Uh, uh, well, it's Peter Musa. I L L. -il -il oh, Ilo Remendi. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I could not think of his name. Um, he, he may be coming back. I think that presents a challenge, and that it will help FC Dallas out a bit. Um, gosh, I can't believe I couldn't think of his name. That's okay. Anyway, um, I, I don't think Ferreira will be back. Um. You know, I haven't heard any reports of him coming back yet. So that's advantage Rapids. But um, this team is – Dallas is just okay right now. Uh, I think they played to a draw versus – was it Seattle last week? Um, which is, you know, good for them. Uh, but this is a team that, in my opinion, is beatable. Um, yeah, Ian's got in the chat. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Um uh, this is a team that's very beatable. When you especially look at uh, what the Rapids did to San Jose, we should come out with the same plan. Um, work that press even harder, I think. Um, start fast and furious at the beginning and put the pressure on from the beginning yep. and very early so they're gonna versus be, Dallas. They're going to be without Jesus. They're going to be without Velasco. Mm -hmm. uh, Ferreira's been hurt. Yeah. Uh, Pomi call has been hurt. He had knee surgery t three weeks ago. So you're good. Like there, they might be rolling out their second string offense yeah. in this game. Yeah. 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 What are you looking for? Um, they're not a goal scoring team. They only scored six goals so far. Um, I think that's the lowest. That's not good. Yeah. That's the goal the scorers are all injured. In MLS or yeah. lowest, at least in the Western conference. Um, they've also given up 10 goals. Um, which is not horrible compared to other teams that have given up 9, 10, 12. So they're right about there defensively. It's just shut them out. Just keep them out. You're coming off a clean sheet, a good defensive effort. This team is worse offensively than San Jose. Can you get a goal or two and change early and change the whole perspective of the game? Yeah. Have them be on the front foot and try to attack, then take advantage of that defense? That's all you really need. Like, it's going to be cold. It's really Musa is really the it's only gonna lockdown. Suck. You have to, exactly. But they the still have Paul Ariola, a really quick guy. Yeah. They have players on there. I'm not saying they're bad, but all you have to do is keep them out of your net, score, hopefully score within the first 20, 30 minutes, and then that whole game's going to change. That second half is going to be trying, FC Dallas trying to equalize, take advantage, you're at elevation, and just wear them down. That's all you got to do. It's going to be yep. an, it's easier said than done. But it's also easier done against FC Dallas than FC than LAFC. It's supposed sure. to snow in the morning, and then just be crappy. Yeah. Is it? Mm -hmm. Ah man. So look, this is a game. This is why you train outside here, right? Mm -hmm. This is like they're ready for this. I have been at some cold trainings this season. Like they're ready for it, yep. right? So this is a game. Again, this is a should win. This yep. is the second should win in a row. Yeah. Right? You're a better team. You are definitely a better team right now, and you got to pile on on Dallas while they're, the getting is good. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. In fact, let's predict what happens. Mm -hmm. Does anybody want to jump in first? I'll go first. Okay. I'll go 2-0. Uh, I'll go Rafa Brace. Rafa Brace. So he'll be at eight goals in nine matches? Yep. I just think that open play goal does so much for confidence. Oh, yeah. And that's the kind of thing that just gets people going. And you saw it. He scored that open play then had the assist to Cole. When you when you're feeling it, you're feeling, it, and that's I think it's gonna be a good time for Rafa to be alive. I'm gonna go two nothing, Pids. Let's go. Um, 
Oh, gosh. Uh, Georgie, I think, will get another goal. And I'll go Bassett at home. I'm, I'm going to take Bassett at home. <coughs> Love that. Love that. The guy who takes shots. <laughs> I think it's going to be a 1-0 game. Because I think once Dallas goes down, I don't think they're interested in trying to beat this press. I think they just lay back, don't, make, don't ruin their goal differential, and get out of town. Mm-hmm. So I think Rafa gets a goal, and that ends it. I think the first goal is the game winner. Run a play game. or PK? Uh, I'm not going to call a PK, although it's crazy that we've already taken almost as many PKs as all of last season. That's crazy. And random, right? That's not something yeah. you can just, you know, there's no trend there. It's like turnovers in the NFL. It's going to be one way one year and then one way the next. Yeah. But you've gotten a bunch of penalties this year. That's a good thing. It's a good thing you have a guy who's automatic. Yeah. It's really what that says to And me. you're going up against... A better defense than San Jose? Not much better. Well, it is better. I think it, it is 60 better. 60-year-old Omar Gonzalez back there. You got... I can't believe he's still playing. I can, man. Dudes <laughs> do not... When you love the game, you look at hey, Suarez, True man. footy head. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, you want to start the plugs to get us out of here? Uh, DNV underscore Rapids on Twitter. Follow us there. Give us a like. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. Five-star review wherever you hear this podcast. Turn on the download so that helps us out. Apple really start, started taking those away. Just turn on the automatic download. It's going to help us get better. It's going to help you keep up with all the Pitts podcasts, and it's going to make it easier for everybody. Love that. Dwayne? DMVR Rapids Takeover this Saturday. Get in there. Uh, Get here. DMVR. Then we jump on the bus together. I will bring some super dope stickers and rapid man goodies and uh we'll give them out on the bus wow and we'll head over to the tailgate we'll get some dev dogs and um oh, i love dev dogs man who doesn't yeah. and <laughs> then we're gonna go in and watch the rapids beat the crap out of fc dallas it's it's going to be cold but it will be the most perfect cold day mm-hmm. that you've ever experienced in your life yeah it's 420, That's my prediction. Dude. Party. 420 party it up this should be a quiet, awkward crowd <laughs> because you're living it up on 420, baby. <laughs> a hungry crowd. I want the longest lines possible at concessions. Ah, oh, dude, poor kids. <laughs> uh, look, it's gonna be good, man. I really, uh, I'm excited for this game. Uh, become a diehard at thednvr.com. You get all sorts of fun stuff. You get behind the paywall. You get. Yeah, the Nuggets. Those guys turn out so much cool diehard content. It's behind the wall. And they're the best in the biz at Nuggets content. Get behind there. They yep. have so much diehard content. Get behind that paywall. See what they're doing. Uh, get in the Discord channels. If you're into that, you get into the Madden League. You get all sorts of stuff behind there. You get free merch. You get the biggest thing. We're about to have the best bar nights for about two months straight with Avs and Nuggets in the playoffs. Right? Literally the best place you can be to watch those games. Right, without being at the game. And you get a discount on your bar tab just because you're a member here. So between the discount awesome. on the bar tab and the shirt, you can pay for that membership like mm-hmm. in three watch parties. Yeah. Straight up. You already paid for it. So good stuff there. Um, hey, Dan, welcome in. Glad you showed up on the uh, over here. Hit the like button on your way out. More important than all that, up the... Pits. Go silly like the mayor. 